KJ, we don't do instructions. <laughs> We're middle-aged men. We're far past doing instructions. Surely. Hello and welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes with myself, Glenn, from Number One Projects, KJ from Crude But Efficient, and Hobar from Behind the Mistakes. Hello, how you doing, fellas? Yeah, great. Hello, no. great. Now that the evening's finally here, it's great. <laughs> busy. <laughs> so, have you had a busy day? Yeah, well, you know, trying to work and uh, be home with a sick kid, uh, and you had plans to have a nice, uh, slow. Uh, last week at work and and hopefully get some workshop time in and that sort of thing but no you have to play uh play nurse instead and and, oh. and try to coax the little one to actually eat something because <laughs> yeah that's oh dear. Uh, yeah sick kids aren't fun you no i mean so- sometimes it's they can be rather chill but but this one in particular when he is sick enough I mean, has sort of uh, a fever uh, that is actually need to take some medication for. You know that when you're sick, your your taste buds get a little different, yeah, so yeah. so food tastes different, and that means that he doesn't eat anything. Oh. <laughs> I try to get him give him candy, cookies, ice cream. He doesn't eat anything. <laughs> so yeah, today I think he's eaten four strawberries and one slice of watermelon. That's oh, about gosh. it. So that, and and in this, in this family we get really cranky when we don't eat, so that you can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah. It's not been a not been a happy day. Sounds oh familiar. <laughs> so have also had a big, uh, a really busy day, haven't you? It's been extremely busy. Um, yesterday as well. I mean, this is uh, <laughs> yeah. I think yesterday I answered one email with. Uh, Great, thank you. And uh, today I answered another email, and that's about it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I took a, a mental health day and uh, spent some time in the garden. Uh, went down to the workshop, uh, did some sanding, did some cleaning. And by cleaning, I meant I used the air compressor to blow out the dust through the open garage gate. So, yeah, it's been a productive day. Nice. And just to clarify, it has been a work day for you. You're not you're not on holiday or anything, are you? No, no. Um, I'll be working this week and um, also next week. But um, at this rate, uh, I can just as well take an extra week of holiday next week because there is nothing happening at work. So whatever I need to wrap up, I can do this week. So. Uh, yeah, so after last week's conversation, then that's just half a week of work this year for you, then. Yeah, roughly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it is a bit stressful, but you know, yeah, with enough coffee and uh, breaks out in the sun, it's manageable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had a very busy physical day, and I managed to dye my hands blue as well. So rocking a bit of a rocking a bit of a Smurf look. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was that all about? Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, what? What col- coloring a pond? <laughs> so you um, on some lakes you dye them to keep the it stops the sun rays get, uh, penetrating the water and uh, stops the weeds growing. Ah, oh. stops them getting overgrown with the uh, oxygenating weeds and things. So it becomes like liquid sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and it doesn't do the fish any harm or the plant life any harm. What is it then? Is it just dye or what? It's a dye, yeah. And the, the the one we use today and the one they normally use in lakes is uh, this was blue. But um, I mean, I've worked somewhere else in the past where we had a reflective pond and we dyed it jet black, so it looked like a mirror when it was still. Hmm. I did not know that you could dye a pond in an ecological way, <laughs> not killing all <laughs> yeah. the plant life and fish or and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, the plant life above the water line is fine. Anything below just doesn't get any sunlight, so it doesn't grow. So, yeah. Does the, the flowers come out blue? Do the fish come out blue as well? No, no. It's just when you pour the neat stuff on your hands, your hands come out blue. That's the only thing. Ah, yeah, because it's not diluted yet. So Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so five, five litres died the whole lake today. So that gives you some idea of the concentration of it. Yeah. 
That sounds like you should be wearing gloves. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Now it looks like you're wearing gloves. Those blue vinyl ones. I just uh, just did a little bit of filming before we came on and... uh, Obviously, my hands are in shot, and I just wonder if I'll get any comments on that one <laughs> because I've got at least two more days before my hands are the regular colour again. What? They might think that you've done an armed, uh, armed what's it? Uh, you robbed a bank, oh, yeah, or bank robbery. <laughs> bank robbery. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> it. Yeah, get one of the uh, ink explosions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> like a week ago, and it's almost almost run off. Yeah. But the question is: Is it food safe? I mean, is it food grade? I mean, since it's uh, you have living things in the pond as well, so it shouldn't kill off everything, I guess. I presume so. Yeah, I didn't. So if you then, I mean, I've had I've had my hands in my mouth since, and I'm not dead. So yeah, you know, I was thinking if you if you mix it into a glass of water and you drink it, can you pee blue? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Next time you use it, I'll give it a go, just for scientific purposes. <laughs> Do it. I might want to read the label on the bottle an extra time before, but... KJ, we don't do instructions. <laughs> <laughs> We're middle-aged men. We're far past doing instructions, surely. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't want you dead, so I have to take over the social media manager position. <laughs> yeah, I don't want me dead, so you do that either. <laughs> I want the social media account dying as well. <laughs> oh. But I, so I mean, we, we are gaining some traction when KJ keeps getting emails now about the uh, people wanting to manage our uh, accounts and uh, yeah, yeah, media yeah, presence. Yeah. yeah. Did, when did that come through to you, that email? Uh, that was a comment on. Uh, on a a post we did on YouTube that we were taking uh, a break over Christmas. They thought that this is a good place to to put this. (laughs) I've gotten some actual emails as well, but I just uh, disregarded those because, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, Yeah. we're we're big enough to be be a target. (laughs) I was going to say go for it, but I couldn't pronounce the guy's name. I mean, that's... That shouldn't stop me, really. I mean, we're all used to that now. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. was just going to say that. <laughs> Who are you and what have you done with Glenn? <laughs> uh, but that being said, uh, I mean, you, you post the statistics every once in a while. And I mean, since we started last year, uh, we're closing up on one year and it, it is a steady incline in that graph. It's nothing exponential or... Uh, huge numbers but it's slowly creeping upwards that's nice so it's not yeah. like panning out or it just suddenly it dies off yeah i actually don't look at the figures anymore because i can never remember what they were last week so <laughs> it was you easy when it was lower numbers <laughs> you don't have a spreadsheet <laughs> do you want a spreadsheet <laughs> do you want a full presentation at the end of the year <laughs> yes please i'd really like that <laughs> yeah 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 all I want for Christmas is a full presentation. That should, that should be a song. Make it into a YouTube video so we can watch it. We don't want to read. Yeah, yeah, make a movie. <laughs> you illiterate bastard. But, so has anyone done anything fun well, last week? Well, about making a movie, someone just posted a video I saw. Oh, I thought you were going to miss that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, I uh, finally uh, finished uh, Fools with Tools Treasure Trade uh, build video of the heavy metal lightsaber. Yeah. Which... With, its, with its skulls, not balls, just to clarify. Yes. <laughs> I know, I know, but I, I can't unsee it. I mean, no, I can't. It's, it's, it's two dangling <laughs> testicles there, no matter how you twist and turn it. <laughs> I, it didn't even occur to me that you could view it like that until you... You said it, but yeah. Yeah. So you do a cylindrical object, and then you hang two spherical objects off the end, and that didn't yeah, make you think t- of anything. <laughs> off the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you, uh, how you were situated down there, but <laughs> well, it depends. Just... Uh, it depends on where you measure from. <laughs> <laughs> 
Look, let's not have another wank cast. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a weird build. I think it might be one the weirdest project I've done so far, but it was it was fun. Uh, it was when you get those uh, an idea in your head and you can't get it out, then you just have to do it. So yeah. You put a lot into it. It was actually a great project. It was nice to see it built. You, when we talked about it on the podcast the other week, you, you made it sound like you'd bought a Darth Vader lightsaber and then just altered it. Yeah, that was my first idea, but then I yeah. realized that that would be boring. I yeah. Mean, it's more fun this way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> then we would have to revoke your maker license. and uh... Yeah, that would be sad. <laughs> yeah, but I, I had a lot of... I should be able to do it like this. I should be able to do it like this. But I didn't really dare to pull the trigger because until I've tried it, I haven't failed. So hopefully it works. And then the deadline came creeping up and I had to actually <laughs> had to actually do it. And yeah, everything didn't work out as planned, but it was, it was good enough. Yeah, what didn't work out? Um... Mostly the the end part. Uh, it should really be some kind of uh, either filing in some some uh, some scrollwork or whatever you should call it at the end, just uh, after the the black strips. Right. Uh, they should look like a screw on cap more or less because oh, that's okay. what it was in the original scrap build, I think. <laughs> but I couldn't find a cap at a suitable size and I didn't feel like trying go to town on it with a yeah. hand file like the day of having to send it off. That's no. <laughs> so I just okay, it looks rather clean and neat as it is. Let's just leave it to that and be happy with it instead. It seems to be a common theme of the Fools with Tools treasure trade that um, people are always last minute or late. Yes. Yes that <laughs> is true. But I mean do you not thing. get enough notice or <laughs> No, but I mean, you are encouraged to do something you haven't done before, to try something new, to yeah. not just, I'm just going to do another cutting board, or I'm going to turn a bowl like I've done a million times. Right. So, I mean, then you're always, uh, you're mostly treading new water. So, right. Then it, then it takes time. And then yeah. you procrastinate. Um, <laughs> then you have a podcast. And yeah. Fair enough. The video turned out great, though, KJ. I really enjoyed it. It was nice Good to time. see how you did it. Oh, Glad to hear it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and once again, the AI music tool worked really great as well. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that was AI yeah. again. That sounded great. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's probably going to be AI all along for me. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, that's really fun to just prompt it and sit, and, sit an evening and just try to make a song with it. <laughs> my AI sent me another music tune for my YouTube videos yesterday. <laughs> Didn't even ask for it. It just it just came through by email. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really nice to call him artificial? <laughs> <laughs> okay, amazing intelligence, perhaps. Or... Yeah, exactly. No, uh, amazing uh, improv. Imp... What's it called? Improvisation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever. I'll do. <laughs> Let's go for that. <laughs> yeah. Let's just stick with Steve. <laughs> okay, I see. Thanks, you Steve. were you were told him you were called an AI, so <laughs> I was just trying to help out. AS artificial Steve. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't call him ass. I think that's not nice. <laughs> <sighs> You've been funny this week, KJ. <laughs> You're on it. That week off did you good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Being bored at a lakeside and burning in the sun, yeah. apparently. And now he's going to have five yeah. consecutive weeks. So. <laughs> oh my God, what, we're gonna, what, what can we expect? Yeah. <laughs> expect the unexpected. <laughs> so, Havar, you got a video out too? No. Yeah. Since we last spoke, you put another video out. No, Just the extended cut. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it, surprisingly, it got I think fifty some odd views, and uh, 
some comments that also indicated that people will actually watch it to the end. So, uh, yeah, that's amazing. What was the retention rate like? Oh, I don't check statistics anymore. I just upload and be done with it. So, <laughs> but I, I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's a very high numbers. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, it's still on my watch later list. I'm, I'm going to be honest, I've never intended on watching that one. <laughs> I, I wouldn't either. I mean, th this is for someone who wants to do the same thing. Then it's uh, yeah. you follow along and build your own. But other than that, it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Any other making done? Yeah. Um... I'm having a guilty pleasure in the workshop. I'm building something and it's not going to be a YouTube video. I'm not filming. What? Yeah. Nice. yeah. So what the hell? <laughs> so I'm building the side table and uh, I went to the hardware store. I, I found the plank of oak. Uh, I'm like, all right. Bought it, brought it home and then, all right, I'm just going to cut the sides of it, the live edge and all right, I could just as well cut the sides and glue those on. And then I like, oh no, I haven't recorded anything. And fuck it. I'm just not going to record. So I've been just gluing up, doing some sanding, doing some cutting, um, preparing to weld the, the table legs. And yeah, not having the hassle of like moving a camera around and thinking about what you're saying. You can have music on in the background. It's like <laughs> amazing. Damn, I was really looking forward to this build as well. Yeah. Well, I, I have taken some pictures for Instagram, so I can just slap those together and uh, put a voiceover on it. But it's going to be a boring one. <laughs> oh, it is really nice. It's fun. You should call it a guilty pleasure, but to yeah. do something without the intention of making content. Because yeah. no, it's good. I have stacked up. Uh, two maybe three other projects that i'm gonna film and uh probably gonna start them next week i think so yeah having one that i can just have fun with it that's nice yeah definitely so it's just the one project you normally got multiple things on the go haven't you yeah um but be before that um of course i had the cnc uh ruin the 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 previous tabletop attempt um and i have since i think it's four weeks i have been continuously logging on and trying to get an answer from the the company who basically made it um never heard anything from them um then i found them on instagram so i just dm them and like ask them <laughs> do you have some technical issues with your uh, like service ticket system because i haven't heard anything and they re replied and asked for my customer number and uh, the ticket numbers and they was going to look into it. And today I got a phone call. So it turns out the when you register uh, uh, like a, a service ticket or something, it goes to the, the company closest to you. And of course, it's the it's the same company who sold it to me here in Norway. And the guy I spoke to today he's on sick leave so that's why he haven't replied because you basically haven't been to work but of course they probably rang him and said we have a customer here that haven't heard anything so could you please follow up on him so he's excused and he was a very nice bloke um so yeah turns out my computer is crap <laughs> <laughs> your, oh. your personal computer that you got hooked up to it yeah because it's my old computer uh, which is singing on its last verse so i got the new one and then i just all right i'll just leave this to the um, cnc and he said that most likely there is nothing wrong with the cnc but something happens from the, the cnc file when it sends the signal over to the cnc to actually do the work um if your computer is overloaded or if it suddenly have a spike in resources running in the background and so and so on, that might cause a bug. So he said, well, get a bigger computer might be a solution. Uh, but of course, before that, I'll try to just shut it off 
so it's not online so it doesn't run any automatic downloads or something that really bugs it down in additional yeah. work and of course uh, start cleaning up some old software that might be using some of the resources so most likely that's an easy fix so uh but you've got a computer in the hell cord, haven't you? Can't you know, just connect the hell cord up to it? You seem to be able to connect everything to the hell cord. Oh, that's amazing. You could have the hell cord make its own parts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. This is how it starts. Yeah, exactly. This is Sky- Skynet yeah. version, version one. One yeah. guy hooked the hell cord up to AI and a CNC and the world was doomed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just imagining the Terminator uh, 2 soundtrack played on the helicopter. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I don't oh, know how a... well the bass notes will go on a recorder, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, you might <laughs> transpose it up a, a few notches, but yeah, <laughs> that uh, would be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> so that was kind of good news because then it's nothing wrong with the cnc it's just a computer um that's nice um and i also uh, i think we mentioned that on the last episode the the company i buy my tools from they had a a sales campaign so I, i bought a new drill and a battery and some other things and of course yesterday i got a message that said your package has been delivered and like a child at Christmas Eve, I ran out to look outside our front door. <laughs> no, no package here. Ran over to the mailbox. Nope, no package. I'm like, God damn it. And all right. I thought the the delivery guy probably just uh, scanned or marked uh, the package as delivered uh, earlier on this route. So I just waited a few hours to see if he showed up. Nothing happened. So... Uh, sent an email to the company I bought it from and also to the transport company. And it turns out it was never delivered. They have done an error. So it's been sent through customs back (laughs) to the company. And yeah, so um, and then they said, uh, all right, we'll just refund you. And uh, if you want it, you have to order it again. But of course, the sales campaign is over. So then I have to talk to them. And but I want the same price as and it's it's a hassle. So yeah. So the money I saved on that, I went directly onto AliExpress and ordered a shitload of various tools and parts for uh, some future <laughs> projects. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we're at. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I've managed to snatch just a couple of hours since we last spoke in the workshop. Last, um, last weekend was a busy one. I took my daughter and two of her friends to the beach for the day. Lovely day, absolutely roasting hot. Everybody got burnt apart from me, <laughs> <laughs> despite putting sun cream on them. So, yeah, that was a, a really nice time. Fish and chips in the evening. Nice. And then on Sunday, we had a dance show, Lily's dance show. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that was the main event on Sunday. But as I say, I did manage to get a few hours in there. And um, I don't know whether it's going to make it to a video or not. I am filming it. But it's um, it's something I'm trying new for me, and it's um, I want its proper name would be sculpting, but I'm going to call it shaping because I don't I certainly can't class myself as a sculptor at the moment. <laughs> I actually so, yeah. had that as an idea here yesterday for us to discuss because the next challenge it would be fun to just not have anything specific, but just pick something you've never done before and yeah. fail so i mean if you pick something <laughs> and you actually do a decent job of it then you have failed you need to fail to win <laughs> and of course for me the sculpting part would have been uh, a nice one never done that before either and it looks terrifying but also really fun so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's only teak i'm using so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it could have been plywood or something expensive yeah yeah exactly <laughs> what are you sculpting with uh hand tools or no never drill never, never hand chainsaw tools. <laughs> yeah. uh tabletop sander uh orbital sander mm. and a dremel so far 
So it's really sm- slow stock removal. No, actually, it's, it's pretty pretty quick. <laughs> 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 yeah, I've got this, the the biggest uh, uh, thing to overcome is getting rid of the dust at the moment. So I've yeah. got the the uh, the vac at the side, just with the big pipe next to where I'm working with the Dremel to try and suck some of it away. Because I don't know whether you know, KG, but um, Havard will know this, that um, Teaks does that really fine dust, like Walnut. Yeah. It just covers everything and really gets into your nose and <laughs> your breathing system. <laughs> that sounds really, healthy. Uh, yeah, I should really put a dust mask on. <laughs> yes, you yeah. should. I mean, take it. Take a piece of paper or handkerchief and uh, blow your nose after working with yeah. teak, and it, it looks like bloody murder. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I've got the age-old problem with a dust mask, though. It fogs up my glasses. Yeah, mm. and I mean, I haven't found a mask yet that is very compatible with beards. Um, of course, I, I've seen the full face one that covers and. They're expensive and they are a hassle. And I mean, if if, it's, if it takes a half a minute to put it on, it, it will never be used. So I'm uh, yeah. I'm still at the holding your breath. <laughs> yeah. Those I mean, space you... those space ones look all right, don't they? Space. Yeah, those space helmets that they wear at NASA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the complete suit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you can always go the Michael Cthulhu route of having a, a snorkel from. Same diving, and then have a f- filter <laughs> behind you instead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because then, I mean, you're breathing behind your neck, and then so that's not big <laughs> clouds. You don't need you a know, big filter either. <laughs> that's a bloody good idea, that, because <coughs> when I come to that point, I'm going to build myself a workshop in a container. I'm going to have a channel up in the roof um, where you have like this connection point for pressurized air and quick connections for the vacuum hose and so on. And of course, you could have some uh, connection points that just goes outside, so you can just have <laughs> like a hose you keep in your mouth, and then you I'm just breathing. Put... To... You need to be really yeah. clear to what hose you're putting in your mouth. Is it the sucky <laughs> one, the blowy one, or the breathing one? <laughs> yeah, and, spe- and especially as you get more into the welding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, or the argon one. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, uh, the air intake on the outside is just uh, also where the the exit air from the <laughs> yeah. dust, dust vacuum is. We're just breathing it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the ultimate recycling. <laughs> yeah. Um, that being said, I actually I found a company that actually delivers containers very close by, which means that um, they are not the cheapest one, but that really cuts down on the, the delivery costs. So um, uh, I think I found a solution. I just have to um, agree on the location uh, with the wife. Hmm. You haven't sounds, done that yet? Sounds, yet? That, sounds, that sounds tricky. <laughs> well, the... the, uh, the the final destination is uh, agreed upon, but I'm thinking oh, temporary if, one. if yeah. I buy it after the summer, uh, can I put it next to the workshop so then I can, so I don't have to run all across the yard with all the tools and equipment while I'm outfitting it. So then it's ready next spring to lift in place. Oh, that's a cool idea. Hmm. I realize if you got to. Um... You're going to have to run power out to it, proper cable and stuff. Yeah. So, um, but I actually have the in my garage now. Um, there is a a separate fuse box, and it actually has three phase as well. I'm not going to put three phase into the container because I don't need it, but uh, I have the possibility well. of run a a, a beefier cable over. But I'm, I'm not running, I'm just running one tool at a time. Uh, and You say that now. <laughs> yeah, I say that now, of course. But I mean, if, if I start tripping uh, breakers, then I can start looking into beefing up the system. But uh... Or if you get a, a three-phase thing, then I will say, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. all he's doing it for, KJ, just to give you some satisfaction. But I mean, I don't <laughs> need a three-phase. I can just pull... Uh, 
two or three single phase extension cords over should be plenty enough. <laughs> yes, you can, but I mean, yeah, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually but if you spent... can uh, take them from the neighbor as well. Yeah, I actually spent the good portion of an entire hour yesterday watching YouTube, uh, learning about uh, floating neutral, because that was new to me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. The more you know. The more I know. <laughs> That's something else I'm not going to learn. <laughs> yeah, I most likely will never need that knowledge, but I mean, that's, uh, that goes for don't... 95 of all my knowledge. Yeah. As long as you don't piss your electrician off, because I've heard that that's if you don't pay your bill, then the electrician comes and just removes the the neutral and, you, and have it floating, and then uh, funny stuff can happen with your <laughs> yeah. with your electrical yeah. system. Um, but that being said, I don't know what it's called in English, but of course, all the houses around here is connected to one big, like this uh, mini house where all the power comes from. Uh, substation substation all yeah. right and of course in the olden days when people were doing moonshining of course that is a, a power uh, hungry uh, activity and that's how they actually spotted people because the power company said there is a lot of power going through that house and uh, then the police comes knocking and well you're using a lot more power than you should on average so uh, can we nosy around and then of course you have a still and that ended up with people bypassing the main fuses so they just hooked up on the outside of the house basically and they could run that for a very long time uh, without getting noticed and a few years back in my father's house um, they had an inspection um, of the electrical system in the house which they do from time to time and they noticed they had a ground fault, but my, my father was uh, an electrical engineer or radio technician. So he said the ground fault is there, but it's not in our house. So it's within one of the other houses that's connected uh, within that substation. And after some checking, they actually, yeah, it's another house. Um, but then I realized you can actually run quite a lot of power outside your main fuses before they notice it enough that they come knocking and say we have too much call it stray power going somewhere so they they probably have some losses and they have a margin of like this, yeah. this is acceptable uh, but it kind of amazes me that uh, you can basically run several kilowatts outside your fuse box and they don't even care as long as you don't trip any fuses or melt any cables that's probably fine i mean now in a couple of years or depending on where you live this will be different because they were actually putting in measuring in the substations as well so we can see uh, see <laughs> where, where the losses are because yeah. at the moment we're, we're in sweden at least you you have a measuring in the houses yeah and you have a measure in the way off in the big uh, big stations yeah, so nothing in between so so those kilowatt hours can be lost anywhere on that and you can't really find where but it's yeah, getting closer and closer because i thought that they had that in the substation so that they went to the substation and when they do service all right it, it reads uh, x amount of kilowatts and then they just all right the 10 houses connected to it has used this one and those numbers match up uh, within a certain percentage and it's good to go but that's not the case and they at least uh, i don't know how it is in, in norway but here they have a measuring and they just read it once a year yeah uh, at the moment so that tells you nothing and i mean it's you're supplying a lot of houses from that substation so yeah uh, there's no way they can find anything unless you're start, you're melting the cables or uh, creating other problems in the grid. Uh, and that's that's really funny because my wife's aunt and uncle they live in an old house um, which has a radiator system, so they have a quite large boiler in the basement. 
And of course, this was connected outside the main fuses and has been for years. And they did not know they they are not into uh, electrical work. So, uh, and of course, the last couple of years, the um, the price of electricity in Norway has gone up considerably, and uh, they had some electrical work redone. And of course, uh, they had redone a, a lot of the electrical system. I think they got a new boiler as well, and then it was hooked up as it should properly. And it's an oh, old <laughs> house that is not very much insulated, and they have gotten free power for years. <laughs> and then they got the the first invoice, and like, holy shit, we got to turn stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> God, that must have been a shock. Yeah, <laughs> having free heating. Oh, what yeah. a bliss! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we just go back to the old system, please? <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> that's oh. nice. I got free heating. Uh, I spent uh, the last couple of days also chopping wood. Uh, we had some. Mm-hmm. Uh, logs laying after we went over to a friend and uh, picked them up. So, uh, yeah, processed them and stacked them. So now we're ready for uh, outdoor uh, wood fired jacuzzi and uh, heating up the house over the winter. That's nice. Nice. Neat. I was quite impressed that you got those logs stacked and some other stuff done on Sunday because the first we heard from you on Sunday was 10 o'clock in the morning saying, so. I'm still in bed. I'm on my 15th cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much the theme for the week for you, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been... Uh, I mean, if every week was like this, it would have been nice. But then, of course, uh, <laughs> my company wouldn't need me. I mean, uh, they should probably <laughs> downsize because, yeah, there's not enough work to go around. <laughs> Isn't that your plan? <laughs> long, long term? Yeah, I mean, if if I could live as a maker, that would probably very much be my day. I mean, uh, staying in bed until, well, probably eight o'clock because I, I would then <laughs> deliver and pick the kids up on a regular basis so that my wife don't have to go through that hassle every morning. Um, but yeah, it's going to be slow days. Have you ever thought out about what would happen if you lived your life as a maker full time? I, I have for some reason. I know my day would start out with a, you know, an alarm call in the morning just to get me out of bed at a regular time every day. <laughs> and then maybe an hour's walk at least. <laughs> I would need structure for sure. Yeah. Um, and I would have a plan. And of course, not to please the algorithm as many people do, but I would set up a plan like... Uh, Fridays, I don't do anything. I just hang around with the kids. Uh, Thursdays are video editing, and you just get yeah. some structure going. And then, of course, it's a bit difficult if I could have enough ideas flowing to keep that time schedule, or if I just end up with, like, what the fuck should I do this week? <laughs> <laughs> what, but, what would it look like for the viewer if you either of you went full-time? Would, would you see more videos of the same quality or would uh, the same amount of videos but higher quality or more bi- bigger builds or more builds or oh i don't know that's a good question yeah i'm not sure the quality would go up uh, <laughs> except of course you do become better uh, for every video you make and and you have more time yeah that, that's yeah. the the biggest factor i think because now i got on average, maybe one hour every night in the workshop uh, because you have to work and then you you have to attend the kids and play with them when they're awake. And then when they go to bed, you have to do all the chores. And then, um, but having full days in the workshop, I mean, I would get a lot of things done, but I would probably also fill up that time. So with the KitchenAid movie, I would probably do more cinematic stuff and like make more of a story out of it, not just the, the build and presentation part. So I would have more fun with the, call it the acting part of the whole ordeal. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd probably try and run one longer project and then still try and go for at least one weekly video of a smaller project, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. But then a longer project for me, if I was a full-time maker, I could probably knock out in a week anyway because 
one of my big projects is not like one of of all help order projects. <laughs> <laughs> Except that is two possible way you could go. Either you can use that additional time and hammer out a project every week or every second week, yeah. or you can pick a larger project and then just have like uh, update videos every week until you are finished yeah. and then start a new bigger project. So, and of course you can mix it up a bit. Seems to be the thing with um, professional YouTubers where they have to, you know, each project has to outdo the other one. So the, the time between videos just seems to get a little longer, doesn't it? Sometimes. Yeah. Trying to outdo yourself all the time must be exhausting. It doesn't yeah. sound fun to do it full time. <laughs> Part time, perhaps, but yeah. not as a single thing. Would you, if you did, if you were a part time maker, then KJ, would the other part time still be doing your regular day job now, or would it be a different job? I'm. I have. I have a hard time visualizing myself doing something else that, or finding something else that is this flexible and pace this well yeah. because i mean that's would be the thing to yeah. have something to take care of the the bills and that sort of thing but just working two three days a week and then spending two three days on on the other thing because i really wouldn't want my paying the mortgage stand and fall with youtube <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a stress yeah. i do not want <laughs> But of course, it's that's my threshold because I'm in the same situation. We live comfortable now. We don't have a too big a mortgage, and we and we make okay money, and we both chip in half of our monthly uh, pay, basically into a, a joint bank account, and that covers all the expenses and food and everything. And of course. If I make enough that I could chip in the same every month, that would be the threshold for, okay, then I can do making full time. Uh, and of course, then cutting down on all my toy money. So, uh, but yeah, yeah the, you would end up being dependent on actually getting money from YouTube. And that varies a lot from videos and when you see other people presenting how much they earn from different videos there is so many variables there that i think you should overshoot that by very much before i would comfortably just lean into that as a main source of income but i, I think most of the makers have separate revenue streams that are more uh, well secure yeah yeah and doing shady commercials for, I mean, established titles or <laughs> better help or whatever the scam of the week is on internet. I actually think I could get into that, to be honest with you. I think <laughs> you could have some fun with that. <laughs> I don't think you don't, you wouldn't have a problem with that, would you, Havar? Well, if I get full creative uh, decisions in how yeah. I make the ads, then okay, but some of them are really bad and uh, I mean the dream scenario would be like uh, for instance the Wintergatan or Nerdforge Nerdforge do some commercial but that's for thing that they like basically um, because they have a good enough revenue stream from the Patreons to keep them going so uh, well I'm not sure about Nerdforge, but I, I get that impression. But I know Wintergatan had so much money coming in from Patreon that he at some point just said, uh, uh, I get enough money to do this full time and I have enough to buy all the parts for my next few iterations. So just hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a luxury problem. I, I won't yeah. be having any time soon. <laughs> Probably not to know. <laughs> Just changing the uh, subject a little. Did you see Fix It Fingers new video? His latest one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The breakdown. <laughs> yes. What you should call it. Yeah, it was a it was a really good video. Did uh, that little bit at the end there where his his wife comes in with the baby and he cries. That put a little uh, lump in my throat. I don't know whether it got you two or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you remember the the baby <laughs> baby times. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a lovely video, though. It's really good. But it is, it is fun to see that. You would expect that it was his job that got to him, but of course, uh, probably plays a part in as a variable in the entire. But uh, like having the paternal burnout. Yeah. Uh, it is a lot. I mean, having a kid, it's. I mean, that's a at least a part time job in itself, and fitting that into an yeah. already full schedule. I mean, that's not easy. So. Yeah. <laughs> That, if anything, can push you over the edge. Yeah. yeah. I often thought when um, Lily was a baby, I, I always thought it was easier to go out to work than stop at home and look after the baby. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. say it as a joke, but it is true. I mean, you go yeah. back to work after the holiday to like relax. I mean, it's something different. I mean, you are, you're totally on all the time, as long as the kids are awake. <laughs> You're ru- <laughs> you're running a unpaid kindergarten at home, so yeah, yeah. yeah you get re- you really appreciate the the kindergarten teachers that they can manage all those yeah. kids and don't <laughs> have a psychotic breakdown. Yeah. But, I mean, I really liked paternity leave. I could, yeah, that was really great uh, with both kids. But after that time, I think I did nine months with, with the first one and 10 months with the second one it, but i was really itching to spend time with grown-ups and talk about grown-up yeah. things and doing <laughs> proper things and not playing with uh, bricks and changing nappies and that sort of thing that's the sad fact the sad fact for me was that michelle wasn't working because she was looking after lily and i was in my just just on the first year of my own business so i could only take a week off yeah <laughs> And boy, was I ready to go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love paternity leave. And of course, if it was just that, I, I could have um, well, several kids. But yeah, it's uh, the sleep deprivation in the years after that. It's, uh, I mean, now we are starting to see the light in the tunnel. They are getting a bit more independent each day. And uh yeah, just hitting that reset button with another baby is like me and the wife just like hell no, <laughs> <laughs> no way, <laughs> ain't gonna happen. I can remember Steve Strumstick Steve. Um, we he had his daughter at the same time that we had ours. That's how we know him and his wife and his family. And um, then they went on to have another one, and they were like. You should have another one. It's great fun. <laughs> and then you just, over the next coming weeks with the new baby, you just saw them get tighter and tighter. It's like, nope, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> yeah. Our kids, have, uh, both of them have have friends who are in the same family. So we know, know them a bit. But they got a third kid as well when we didn't. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, we feel that we, we pulled a long straw on that one because it's. <laughs> It seems like a bit too much to have three small kids. Yeah, that's that's not good. No. So, did you? Are you still going for the snip of our? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. But of course, it is. <laughs> I have a lot of friends who've done it, so uh, I mean, but it's still there is a threshold there. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a drop in appointment so it's like i can have it done tomorrow or the day after and uh, <laughs> and my wife keep asking me oh, have you ordered an hour yet no, no. <laughs> so what, what's holding you up i don't know but, <laughs> but I, I want to do it and uh, of course yeah you're making it sound like you're going and the nurse straps on a steel to bo- boots and kick you in the nuts <laughs> yeah. and you're out of there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's, that's brilliant. I mean, um, uh, my wife said, uh, all right, but you, you have this friend. He, he was also going, going to do it. So why don't you book it the same day and you take into a hotel <laughs> and uh, you have a beer and you just uh, watch TV and uh, sulk together and uh, make an evening out of it. It's like, well, that's basically not a bad idea, but... Uh... Can you do a tandem operation? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can cut each other. 
Oh. That's some sort of sacred bond for the rest of your life, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like taking it a notch up from Blood Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffer Brothers. <laughs> my, when my brother-in-law had it done, me and him played squash that very same evening. He was absolutely fine. But yeah. when my actual brother had it done, he was walking around like John Wayne for two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, like he just got off a massive horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not something I ever entertained, to be honest with you. Mm. No, so it's uh, well, I'm. It's gonna happen during this uh, summer. Just don't know when yet. And then, of course, it's always. But <laughs> yeah, we're going away for that weekend. So uh, all right, we'll do it after that. And then it's holiday, and we're going to the cabin. All right, but I don't want to do it then. And then suddenly it's <laughs> October, and then. Yeah, it's Christmas, <laughs> <laughs> Easter. <laughs> yeah. Well, my my wife has been tra- threatening me, and like, I'll just make the appointment, and then I'll uh, invite you out for a, a date and a dinner, and then I'm like, ta-da! Well, this is not a restaurant. <laughs> remember yeah now i remember my my father had uh, an artificial hip he got one very early and of course um i think he was getting closer to 60 and that was worn out so it was time to of course make a new one and the technology has evolved a lot and they did the operation without what's it called in english they, they didn't put him under you just get oh, that's an aesthetic. Yeah, and you just get a screen so you don't have to watch it and then but he like oh can't you remove it? I would like to watch because I mean it's it's the maker, he wants to look at the tools and of course uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nope. <laughs> yeah. Would not want to see that. <laughs> Me neither. No. Oh. <laughs> I sometimes struggle at the sight of a steak, so that would <laughs> well out the window for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have no problem with splatter movies and that sort of thing where they no. blow and shoot stuff off. But when it's surgery, when you're actually supposed to put stuff back together again yeah. and not just damage anything, I have a real problem with that. I think it just goes back to me not being able to deal with real life, KJ. <laughs> when it's faking on the telly, it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was close to I, I could have been a, a bloody uh, surgery thing uh, just the other day when I was uh, uh, I was cutting off some old rusty bolts from where I'm making the the stairs and using the angle grinder of course um, the bolts were sticking out so I, I used the angle grinder grinder in a, a bit of weird angle yeah. cutting off and then I'm gonna cut the last one off start the angle grinder and that that sound something is wrong the sound is weird. And I pick down and see that the nut had come completely off. Oh so the disc God. was just spinning up without anything holding it. So <laughs> I held it very closely to turn it off. Okay, I'm not going to move in the slightest. <laughs> I would have held it above my head and tried to shake it off to see where it had gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have a camera rolling. So... Oh, yeah, no point. <laughs> <laughs> so that felt really, yeah, uh, that was a bit scary. I must have pushed it to close to the concrete so the nut got got tangled in some way. Yeah. I don't know how it otherwise that it came off like that. So did you just retighten it, or did you just switch to one of your many other angle grinders? I I I, <laughs> I found a nut and retightened it and <laughs> make sure that it was on properly this time. Yeah. Talking about uh, angle grinders, I'm, I'm actually waiting for one of those quick nuts or whatever they're called uh, for my angle grinder. Uh, and yeah. uh, I also realized that I'm not going to buy myself a welding fixture table because they're too expensive. And then I found the, uh, yeah, several people make their own. And then I saw, I think it's Marius Hornberger. Um, a YouTuber, he, he made one out of uh, square tubing where he actually drilled the holes himself. 
and of course that seems tedious uh but i would like to do the same thing i could just make a, a table out of square tubing but i'm have the distance between them is large enough that you can get a regular wood clamp in between because i have a drawer full of these old crappy cheap clamps that i really don't use but they could be used for welding basically and then yeah. uh, I checked with the um, uh, hardware store and I, I can actually make a 800 by 1200 millimeter welding table for $140 basically. So that mm -hmm. that's a steal. That's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. As long as you don't need a machinist precision of it, which I'm sure you don't. No, as, as long fine. as it's flat and I don't need these uh, holes for dog pins for making angles because I'm not going to do a lot of repetitive work at like those uh, margins. So I can, if I need to make a 90 degree angle, I can make a... Uh, some temporary fixture and then just clamp it no. in place and just measure a couple of times. So yeah, well, that's, uh, that is something um, I'm going to knock out relatively fast, I think. And have you got space for it at the moment or are we, no, should we no, just look no, forward no, to sir. seeing it behind you with your giant organ? Yeah. <laughs> it's going uh, to be a side table for the organ for, uh, until I get that container and, uh, yeah. I mean, a good thing with that design is that it's really light compared to a, a proper welding table, so it's easy to move around. Yeah, uh, and I also thought if I make the, the top plate and if I make it 120, then it's the same width as my trailer. Because when I work outside, I just put a plate over the, the back half of my trailer and use that as a work table. And then I can do that with this as well. So I could just prop the, the welding table up against the wall. And when I need it, I could just bring it outside, slap it down on my trailer and start welding. And then, of course, when I get the, the container, then I can weld some legs to it and make it a proper table. Nice. But that also like means plan. that the container is going to be... Uh, a metal based workshop. So I'm not going to move my CNC and all the woodworking tools into there. So I'll keep that in the garage still. For as long as the garage is a garage. Yeah. yeah uh, there was talk about you handing it over to the kids, wasn't there? Yes. So of course, but that's a long term goal. I, I need at least a two container setup because uh, the, the metal work needs to be separated from the woodworking part. And yeah. And at I that also... time, the kids should know how to use a CNC anyway. So yeah, Exactly. <laughs> it's kid-sized. <laughs> and talking about kids, of course, uh, last week I I stumbled over the guy who was selling uh, like a miniature 50cc ATV um, for kids. Um, and it was brand spankingly new. I think he, have, he has run two petrol tanks through it uh, and it went a bit too fast for his kids so he just sold it for half the price and of course someone got to him before me so uh, i just said well if the other guy don't buy it just give me a call and then in the evening he just sent me a message well the other guy was a no-show so if you want it i want it i go and get it tomorrow so i went over and got this and of course in the back of my head i know it's going to be for a project um, but it is brand new. And of course, I've been spending the last week with the kids just driving up and down the road here. And of course, the, all the neighboring kids are coming out because they hear all that noise. And uh, do you want to try as well? Yes. All right, go, 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 <laughs> go get your helmet. So I've been driving back and forth with all of the kids. And of course, the, the parents standing outside and uh, trying to act like it's okay. And but they're biting their nails. And <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. But, uh, Fantastic. Talking of uh, buying stuff off marketplaces, do you want a lathe update? Yeah. Yes. Well, you're going to have to wait till the half pint. <laughs> <laughs> nice one smooth <laughs> let's call it a night fellas thanks right. for listening thank you guys see bye. you next time bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>